And now, live in studio, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Welcome to the Consumer Quarterback Show. Normally it's Brandon Rhymes. Today it's going to be Ian Beckles. So the coach called me in. Um, uh, they used to call me uh, an MPUP, multi purpose utility player. So when somebody needs a little help, I'm going to step in and hopefully do a wonderful job. I know Brandon does that every single week. This is Intelligent Talk Radio. And what that means is we're going to bring in some intelligent folks to talk about some things that I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, I know a little about um, some things. I know a lot about football, uh, but I don't know a whole lot about insurance. So we brought Richard Fica in here. How are you doing, Richard? I'm great, Ian. How about yourself? Fantastic. From Florida Coastal Insurance. Going to be honest, Richard, when I thought when I heard insurance, I didn't expect for you to walk through the door. I'm a little bigger than most people think. You're bigger than most insurance guys. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm bigger than most radio guys. That's true. So that's all good. You play ball? Uh, very, very small one year, but I power lift competitively. You do something. You lift something. Yeah, you sure. can push some things down, too, probably. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I bench press pretty good. What was your biggest bench press ever? Uh, I hold the US the USPA record for 617 <laughs> for over 40-year-olds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I did 500 back in the day and 470 in the college. That was the most in Indiana history. Yeah, it's you know, very rare to see 500. You very very rare. So 617. Yeah. You had the whole tight suit and everything like that. No, no, right? that's raw. Oh, really? No, without the tight suit. Without the suit. Well, that's pretty I darn raw. That's pretty darn impressive. Thank you. Your handshake's impressive too. My hand's still throbbing a little bit. Uh, so we're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit of insurance. Uh, we have Juan Conchero calling in from Catering by the uh, by the family. He did some help over there in Key West, which is wonderful. They needed it. Also, uh, he does a lot of flying. We're going to talk about Roy Holiday and the uh, misfortune and the unfortunate uh, situation with him passing. And you know, there's a, the videos you can see. Maybe it, this could have been prevented. You you know, he just, you know, when you when you live fast, sometimes you die fast, unfortunately. And then Zach Davis, uh, general manager from Maximum Audio Video. How are you doing, Zach? Doing all right, Ian. How are you doing? You doing all right? Yeah, man. Now, uh, Maximum Audio Video uh, on Dale Mabry, correct? That's correct. Very nice. So we're going to come back and talk a little bit about, you know, all the audiovisual stuff going on because it seems to be moving fast every single day. It doesn't slow down. No doubt. Now, uh, uh, Richard, uh, U.S. Army Airborne Infantry. I was. Good yeah, for you. Feels like yeah. a long time ago. Yes, thank you, first of all. Thank you. And while I have you, okay, I swear to you, I, I have my own show on the Bow 1025. Okay. And we talk every day about the situation with the NFL and you know we're talking about military in general first of all are you an are you an NFL fan a uh, huge fan I'm a season ticket holder for the Bucks good for you thank, so I, I know you. I know who you are well. yeah okay good that's good to know um but forget about what I believe what do you think of when when Colin Ka Kaepernick knelt back in the day and these players kneeling now what you know what's your opinion on that uh, a lot of my army buddies don't like it but I believe that I fought for their right to kneel they're on a huge stage. If you're going to try to bring, if you're going to try to bring uh, notoriety to a cause, Correct. there's no better stage to do it. Now, I won't blame ownership if they try to limit it because I understand they're business owners first and foremost, and they're taking it in the pocketbook. Mm -hmm. But I don't blame the players at all. I support what they do. That's an intelligent way of looking at it. I mean, that doesn't mean that's right. It doesn't mean it's right because when, when you talk about this, what people don't realize is there's really no right and wrong answer. Mm -mm. If it does, if you if you don't like it, that's fine, and if you're fine with it, that's fine as well. But what you said, the most important part was you, you fought for the right for him to choose. It's the most peaceful protest you can possibly have yeah. done in a way, and he did it. If you actually follow the story, and I know you know. Mm -hmm. He did it after consulting Correct. with a special forces veteran because sitting they thought was less respectful than kneeling. So I have no problem with it. And the problem I have is I have two daughters that went to Florida. One went to Florida. One's going to Florida. And I believe some of the same people that were so upset that these athletes are kneeling were not as upset when the that white supremacist was talking at Florida. I mean, I they both have the rights. But you shouldn't be upset about one and not the other. Voltaire, I, yep. right, I do not with, agree with what you say, sir, mm -hmm. but I'll defend to my death your right to say it. 
Sure. That's just that is true. And one is peaceful and one is not peaceful. Uh, abso- oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I I I abhor what happened in Gainesville. Mm-hmm. But again, I loved what they did. They just ignored the guy and let it go away. I was proud of Gainesville. Well, for that's, that. that was his right to do it, and that's yeah. fine. Okay, let's move on. Insurance, obviously. Insurance is one of those funky things that unless you're in insurance, you don't really understand it. Um, with all the things going on in a hurricane, um, that's tough because I, I don't delve into it too deep. My wife really does a lot of that stuff. So for so, some of the small businesses to start off with, uh, I talked to a young lady that had a business, a restaurant, and she said, you know, for the hurricane, she she had to thaw out $12,000 of meat and pretty much waste it, then repurchase $12,000 of meat, and then, you know, pretty much for eight days, they were, they were out of service, and then the next six days after that, everybody was scared to spend money. So how much can they go to the insurance with and say, well, this is how much we lost? So one of the one of the big things I try to do with my clients, I, I've been an educator of insurance for about 21 years uh, since I left the military, and a lot of people don't realize that, like, for example, if you don't have damage to your building, you're not covered for loss of income yeah. unless you buy a special endorsement. Okay. Now, so what we try to do is sit down with our clients and discuss those things and say, look, you know, you're a, they'll say, oh, I don't need that because I'm in a great big concrete building. That loss of income will hurt them far worse sure. than a five thousand dollar repair to a window or a door or whatever the case. Um, there's everything you just talked about. There are coverages out there to to have. The big thing is just educating the consumer that you need these things because all of those years you pay the extra three four hundred bucks a year that it that you gnash your teeth and pay it. It's going to pay off in that one year when the hurricane Irma hits. Sure. Now, as far as individuals, you know, like myself who own a house. And you talk about mostly there's a lot of tree damage. That, that's what we got. To what extent can you look to get paid back? As far as say your tree dies, that gets damaged. If it hits the house, to, to what extent? Sure. So the old joke, right, is if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there, did <laughs> yeah. it really fall, right? Mm-hmm. Well, in insurance, if a tree falls and it doesn't hit covered property, it never fell. Uh, if a tree, so you can see people in front of their homes, right, pushing it onto their onto their their house and they mm-hmm. can get paid, but. Basically, the, the big thing to know about trees that I would love your listeners to know is that the minute a tree falls on your property, it's your tree. And so a lot of people are blown away by that idea. When a tree comes onto your property, it's your tree. Anybody's tree. Anybody's tree. Wow. The only exception to that is if you have let your neighbor know in advance that that tree is in a dangerous condition, now it's a liability of your neighbors even if it falls on your property. That's why so many people need to go to their neighbor politely mm-hmm. and say, hey, I'm going to be sending you a letter certified that says that tree is dangerous. I just want you to take it down. No big deal. But now now you have proof when God forbid that tree does fall on your house that it becomes their policy that's paying for it, not yours. You're saving the cost of the removal, the damage to your home and the deductibles and so on and so forth. Documentation obviously is very important. We're talking to Richard Fleika from Florida Coastal Insurance. Now, after Irma... Uh, with a company like yours, what kind of mayhem is happening afterwards? I mean, what the day after? What what are your what is your what are your phones like? They're they're going nuts, and that's what we're here for. You know, uh, I, I'd love to say 364 days a year, but we go years sometimes where we just transact insurance. Um, we've actually set our agency up so that I mean, if our agency became bricks and mortar pebbles, we can move our phones into another building, plug in, and go right to work because that's when our clients need us the most. Um, you got to be able to pick up those phones. you got to be able to take those calls. You have to be able to answer questions like, is my screen enclosure covered? Um, and that's literally what I've been doing for months. I've Since the storm, um, I've had no less than two client meetings a day just to review because, you know, it's an, it's an awakening for a lot of people. Horrible event, but good for them to finally see the, the value in what they're buying. Well, I say I'm probably the average person and maybe I'm worse to the average person as far as having knowledge of what I'm covered for. I just don't know. Uh, when when these things come up, or you know, Irma, we knew Irma was coming. At that point, you guys must have been flooded with people calling just to see what they're covered with, what they're not. And I'm sure just beforehand, <laughs> a lot of people find out that maybe they don't have the right coverage. What happens at that point if they want to add some coverage? So there's a window uh, for the two for the the two weeks prior to Irma. I could write with almost every carrier I had, and we had an idea that it was out there for the seven days prior to Irma. We had carriers by the hour shutting down. So we were literally on the phones with our best referral partners, mortgage brokers, realtors, 
and telling you know investors and saying you're, you're down to the wire you have minutes you know possibly and uh, that's where we hopefully set ourselves apart is we were on the phone saying there's three companies left you're down to two companies um the really big thing we did is like we probably sold a hundred flood policies but right before Irma got here. Now, those policies aren't effective for 30 days. Mm -hmm. But what happens is the person calls and they're scared and they're freaked out. And my team gives them a quote and then says, okay, it's 30 days. And then I get on the phone and I say, okay. Now, you're not, you don't want to buy it now because I told you 30 days. But that sick feeling in your stomach, that, that punch in the gut you have right mm -hmm. now, you're going to feel it again when the next one comes. And so why don't we go ahead and get this in place so we don't have to feel this way again. And uh, most people, they, they respond well to that. And what what do we learn as we go forward? I mean, what advice would you give somebody? How, what's the big, what's the biggest mistake people make? And Ins people literally think that they can reduce insurance is non negotiable. And what I mean by that is, there's never been a person who said, "Hook me up and I'll give you a better price." Okay. So if somebody gives you a better price, it's either because they moved you to a different carrier that truly had one, or if it's with the same carrier you're already with, they just reduced coverage. Um, and what people are finding out is those reductions of coverage, that 50 bucks you save here, 25 you save here, don't tend to be worth it once Irma's in the box. Yeah, and let's hope that there's there's a, no more Irma's coming because Absolutely. I've been here sin, since 1990, and uh, there's never been, forget, forget, forget about damage, there's been worse damage, but Irma's damage was done before. Like, I've, people were frantic, and then afterwards, once it wasn't the damage, it was just... You know, what we thought was going to happen, unfortunately. 21 years uh, in the business of Florida native for life. I don't scare easily. This is, uh, I sent my three and a half year old son to Tennessee. Wow. Because even I just had a feeling on this one it could go bad. And um, we, we got hit on average about 85 mile an hour winds. We are so blessed because at 125, which is what they expected, the damage, it doesn't go up linearly, it goes up exponentially. No doubt. So we would have seen way more trees, way more signs. We'll take a quick break. Hey, everybody. I'm Forbes Riley, celebrity TV fitness host and creator of The Spin Gym. I'm here today with Brandon Rimes, and you're listening to The Consumer Quarterback Show. Great ways to get happy, healthy, and wealthy. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. Enjoy tranquil seclusion in an eco-lover's paradise. Paddling through the mangroves where the only sounds you'll hear are the sounds of nature. Because you deserve to relax on vacation, visit Pasco County, Florida.
listening to The Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at ConsumerQB.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. All right, welcome back. Consumer Quarterback Show, normally with Brandon Rhymes, Ian Beckles sitting in, Intelligent Talk Radio. Uh, it's going to be on 1025 The Bow, which I'm very familiar with, uh, AM 1380, and also We Beam TV. Uh, Dignitary is my brand. I'm on 1025 The Bone every day from 5 to 6 a.m., so get your asses up early. Uh, I'm also on Saturday with Ray Lampy on the show Flavor and the Ian Beckles show every Sunday from 11 to 1. So I'm on every day. I work every day. I just don't work a lot of hours. So when Brandon asked me to sit in, I said I have plenty of time. So uh, it was great talking to Richard Fica, uh, Florida Coastal Insurance. Uh, a lot of us don't know answers about insurance. I really don't. Um, Juan Conchero from Catering by the Family is on the line. Juan, how you doing, brother? I'm doing wonderful, Ian. How you doing, bud? Fantastic. Juan, well, I had the pleasure of meeting you a little while ago. Uh, saw you at Dignitary Headquarters. How, how's business going over there at Catering by the Family? Man, we are in the heart of wedding season, so we are rocking and rolling. Uh, you know, the weather has cooled off, so uh, the outdoor weddings are in full effect, man. It's, uh, it's amazing. Good for you. I know you guys did some good things, uh, you know, for Key West when they were going through those tough times. What did you get accomplished with Key West? Well, um, you know, we're part of uh, On the Upwind Flying Club there out of Tampa Executive Airport, and we put together a Key West Relief uh, that also turned into the, uh, you know, Caring for Puerto Rico. Uh, movement there, but uh, for Key West, we took down about 20 planes uh, the first day, and these are you know the smaller general aviation planes, uh, and about 15 planes the second day. About uh, probably about 500,000 pounds of of, uh, of supplies down to the Keys uh, between flying, and then also we took uh, U-Haul trucks and Penske trucks down, so, uh, so we were able to get a lot of relief supplies down. And you fly yourself, correct, Juan? I I do I do. I do fly myself as well. Well, that's a great lead-in with, you know, the tragedy of uh, Roy Halladay losing his life. Uh, unfortunate and obviously way, way too early. Uh, 40 years old, flying by himself. First of all, is it is it the norm to fly by yourself? Absolutely. Um, there's a, you know, we fly by ourselves a lot. I mean, when you're in training, um, there's a lot of solo time that you need to, to get. I think he just got. I think he just got cut off. He might have, must have had a bad line. And I was also going to ask him about um, Halliday, and obviously he was flying very recklessly. Uh, I'm. I don't fly myself. I don't exactly like those little planes. But I know when you're zooming and coming down five feet from the water, it doesn't take a whole lot, you know, to to bite it. Unfortunately, um, you, you don't fly, do you? Do either one of you guys fly? No, no, I don't. Those little planes scare me. As a big man. If they ask me how much I weigh, I, I don't get on the plane. <laughs> That's well said. <laughs> yeah, right? Because, you know, all the, everybody's lying about it. You know what I mean? So uh, I remember the last time I was one of those small planes. I was uh, heading to uh, the Key, Key West, and I was the last one on the plane, and there was one seat left, and there was the back row. There was five seats in the back row, and I was the middle guy. So there was two people on both sides, and... You know what I'm talking about with, with middle seats. So you don't exactly you don't quite don't, <laughs> you don't no. quite know what we're talking about as much. But as a big man, that was like I'm, oh. my, my back wasn't good afterwards. Absolutely. Okay, let's go back to line. Let's get we have Juan Conchero on we're the back. line. Juan, how you doing, brother? Juan, you're back. All right, Juan, Juan isn't back. All right. So then we, we we'll go a different route. How how about that? All right. Um, you know the whole thing with uh, Roy Halladay. Um, when you hear stories, and having played in the league for a while, you know people look at athletes sometimes in interviews and they go, "That's a nice guy." And I'm telling you, that's not always the case because you can say anything on, on Mike. When you hear the people around Roy Holiday, they all were saying he was a great guy. He was very giving. He gave back to his community. So you hate to see somebody like that go down like that, especially somebody who gave back so much to to everybody and just seemed to to get along with everybody. And uh, you know, in this day and age, and I'm hearing there's so many people out there that, you know, are acting a fool um, in our government and a lot of other places. We don't want to bring up too many names, <laughs> but there's other people acting a fool. It's, it's a shame to, you know, lose somebody like that. Okay, let's try one more time, Juan. Three strikes and you're going to be out. Juan, 
How how you doing? I'm I'm great. I'm here. You're not in the tunnel anymore, right? You doing all no, right? No, no. I'm I allegedly I have five bars. Um, well, it must be a Brandon's bootleg line he has over over here. Now, going back, you did you get a chance to see the the, the video of of Roy Halladay flying? Did you see the video? You know, I I did see the video. Listen, I'll tell you, I'm criticized. I'm not in the cockpit, but looking at the video as well, it does look like they were doing you know some I don't know aggressive maneuvers that are really low to the ground or show um, showboating. Show or showboating, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. and. Um, that plane, the Icon A5, is a gorgeous aircraft. I saw it at the fly-in um, over at. All yeah, right. Okay, that's 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 a third strike, but it sounds good. What I've heard about that plane is that there's had some s serious incidents already this year, and you know Roy Halladay's wife begged him not to get that plane, and I guess every time he went out with the plane, she was you know petrified that he's not going to come back. Wasn't it one of the first ones ever sold of that model too? Uh, possibly. I, I don't. I didn't hear that, but I heard three people this year alone died in those planes. It's a hot rod. It's yeah. a hot rod. Plane. Yeah, and yeah. and it, you you saw the video, right? Yep. And once again. I, I've never seen a plane that low. I mean, after uh, since 9-11, if I see a plane that's, you know, seriously, three <laughs> right. miles in the air, I'm, I guess I get nervous. Forget about a plane five feet off the ground zooming. So, um, once again, it's it's sad because we see too many athletes, uh, young athletes that are going away, whether it's boats. Keep pushing. Yeah. Keep pushing. Yeah, but, you know, unfortunately, I think you, you lose a lot of uh, athletes in boats because of the lack of knowledge. I don't think that was the case here. Right. It just it, it was, it's unfortunate, and you know we would we we wouldn't have known unless people were there videotaping him. You know, and even the yeah, people right. videotaping were here like, oh geez, this guy's this guy's acting crazy. And then once once that wing hits, that's it. And I don't know a whole lot about planes, but supposedly this plane folds up, like the wings fold yeah, up. Yeah, yep. Does that sound? Like it's security. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I would get in that. No, I've been in those little planes with some recruiting trips going to Omaha, Nebraska, and places like that, and I couldn't wait for it to get back on on the ground. Anytime you choose an avocation that's dangerous by nature, and then you decide to pick the most dangerous of the planes mm -hmm. and a dangerous yes. hobby, you can't be surprised when outcomes like that happen. It's just. It's like making a drag motorcycle. There, there's only a couple outcomes that are going to happen. No That's doubt. right. Well, you're a U.S. Air, uh, Army uh, Airborne Infantry, mm -hmm. so you fl flew often. 66 times I jumped out of a plane. You jumped out of the plane 66 times. Perfectly good plane. Were you the same size as you are now? I was about 240 when I was in. Okay. And they called me the... F I, I got accused <laughs> of being the fattest guy ever in an airborne unit. 36-inch waist, 240, and I was... Obese by military standards, but you're jacked though. You were jacked. I was at 240. You were jacked, oh, yeah. up, no doubt. But that that whole jumping out of a plane. First of all, I, what I'm what I mean terrified of heights. <laughs> like I, on every, I'm not scared. I blocked Reggie White, and I wasn't scared. But I can't drive over the Skyway. <laughs> I can't drive over the Skyway. It's too high. It's, it's a shame. I just when somebody else is driving, I kind of close my eyes and do my thing. But I, whatever the anxiety attack is. When I'm at the top of the Skyway Bridge, that's what I'm getting. I can't imagine being up there jumping out of a good plane. So I had a parachute open at about 20% uh, on a runway. Shattered my whole right side. Your whole right side? Uh, right side of my arm. Let me be very clear. <laughs> okay. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Uh, got a concussion pretty good. Um, and I jumped after that. The, be the same day? No, 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 no. I'm just yeah. saying once I healed up, I continued. Because, but again... Back to what we were saying. Mm -hmm. I don't. If any, if, if something else would have happened to me, I don't think I have the right to look at anybody else and say, "Wow, that's surprising." Exactly. You know this. You know he died. It's unfortunate, but you got a better chance of dying in a plane if you're flying by yourself, five feet over the water. You remember Steve Irwin back in the day? Great guy. Well, it was a mistake that he died, but you're swimming on top of a ray. It's a good. The only way you can die by getting a ray barb in the ch in the chest is, is, near is by swimming over a ray. So what I what what Ian Beckles does is he doesn't jump out of planes, he doesn't fly five feet from the water, <laughs> and he doesn't swim on rays. You got to get me a different way, <laughs> and I don't go over the skyway because if you go over the edge of that, that's that's really really that's, that's really far over there, no doubt. All right. Um, we're we're going to come back. We're going to talk to uh, Zach Davis, general manager from Maximum Audio Video. I think most dudes and a lot of women out there are just hip to the electronics going on out there. And uh, 
like cooking, and I heard you talk about cooking earlier, electronics are sexy now. Yeah. There's so much going on, and there's actually a lot of simple stuff out there. Like, at first I fought Alexa. Now we're all hugged up. Right. Yeah, we're dating now. Yeah. Me and Alexa, we have a relationship and everything. It's going to keep happening. Yeah, it's going to keep happening. And I don't know if they're not videotaping our whole world, but Alexa makes my life easy. There's no, no doubt about <laughs> exactly. that. We're going to take a quick break and come back and talk to Zach Davis, the general manager for Maximum Audio Video, and uh, just have fun and be intelligent. We'll be back. Hey, this is Grant Cardone, and you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Rhymes. Do not touch that dial. I'll come right through the radio and grab your throat. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372, online at ConsumerQB.com. Listening to the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. Online at consumerqb.com. All right, welcome back. Ian Beckles filling in for Brandon Rhymes. If you are a social media person, you can check me out at Ian Beckles. Uh, we had the pleasure of talking to Richard Fica earlier, Florida Coastal Insurance. We had some issues with Juan uh, from Catering by the Family, uh, but we'll get back with Juan sometime. Now we have Zach Davis, the general manager from Maximum Audio Video. How are you feeling this afternoon, brother? I'm fired up. You doing good? Yeah, bud. Now, uh, where are you guys located exactly? We're about two miles north of Raymond James Stadium on Dale Mabry. I'm picturing you because I, I, I think you have a... Um, you know where it is. And it's... Um, is there a furniture place next to it? There is a furniture place I, next I to it. I know exactly. Florida where. Hospital across the street. How long you been there? 35 years. I was about to say forever you guys have been there. Yes, sir. And the furniture place outside has the hand chairs. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually bought hand chairs from that <laughs> place, it, so I, right? know exa I know exactly where you are. How long have you worked there? Seven years. Okay. Uh, how much do you think electronics has evolved in the last seven years? Because in the last 20 years, it just seems like night and day. I mean, the last seven weeks. I, just said, I mean, it, right, just, yeah. it just keeps on moving and... Uh, there's as much information as misinformation out there, and not intentionally. People have best intentions when they're talking about stuff, but a lot of people just don't understand. A lot of retailers just don't have experts that work there to be able to sure. tell them the difference. 
Well, I think uh, there's a lot of places that are supposed to have experts that don't have experts. Like, I'll give you, for instance, uh, cell phones. Like uh, when my right. cell phone's banged up, I go to a cell phone place, and those aren't experts. There's, the, there's no, no way. They're, they're not. There's, there's no not. Way. They're not. They're not. Okay, because if something takes you five hours to figure out, you're not an expert. No. It could be just transferring my numbers to another phone. And there was another company I left that I'm not going to bring up, but... It was a difficult process, I'm sure. When I walked in the door, I knew it was going to be six hours. It doesn't matter what was going on, it was going to be six right. hours. And right now I'm having issues with my phone. I, can't, I have no calendar. I can't pull my calendar up. They said, oh, just go to the website. It's real easy. That's the famous last words. Nothing to go into the website is ever easy, by they the way. They want to get you out of there. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a problem. Now, it, with modern technology... Um, what how how much have apps affected electronics i'm not an app guy sure. I, mean, I use my iheart radio to, to listen to stuff on the bone or whatever but i'm not a big app guy how much has, have, have apps affected you know just audio and, and visual you're, you're the perfect guy to talk to about this because everything has an app if it you really go to does. you go to the home improvement store everything has an app every piece of electronics you buy it has an app and while that's great you end up with 30 apps on your phone that control an individual piece in your home, at your office. You're the only one, if you've figured it out, you're the only one that knows how to use it. Correct. Your significant other, maybe your kids, but, you know, just a, you have an app for your TV, you have an app for the front door, you have an app for your camera, you have it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But the problem, this is the problem for me, okay? I swear to you, in a lot of ways, I'm very, you know complex in a lot of ways i'm very simple right like i think it's okay to go and flip a switch sure because i've been doing that my whole life i don't think i really want to stand up and turn on a television that's a, that's too long ago right but we're so deep into what we're doing that we're doing things through apps to where if there's one glitch there's going to be a problem and for god if you forget a password for something you may be on lockdown for the rest of your life <laughs> And I think that's what the problem is these days. Now, stuff like Alexa and stuff, that's very simple, uh, but it gets a lot more complex than that, doesn't it? So Alexa by itself doesn't really do anything. It yeah. listens to what you say and it will execute whatever you told it to do. Mm. Uh, you gotta have some things connected to it to make it do those things. What we specialize in, especially in today's um, environment with electronics and with technology, is trying to wrap all that stuff into one place so mm. you learn how to use one thing it keeps evolving with you so you change one piece out you get it but you're not continuously learning new apps learning new software learning new remote controls everything's in one place and you can kind of teach the whole family how to use it or they can all learn how to use it and it doesn't change the problem now is everything is independent nothing talks to one another mm. so you just end up with the convoluted uh, system in your home or your office that doesn't really work right. It's cool, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually give you that satisfaction of being able to come home, push a button, and everything just works. No, well, that sounds good. It doesn't use the word. You're right. It doesn't use the work. We're talking to Zach Davis, general manager from Maximum Audio Video. I've had electronics my whole life. Nothing crazy, uh, but I swear I've never got to a point where I had one remote. I swear to God. Yep. Like, I've, I've my whole life, I've had two remotes. But I've never had one remote. Is there one this sexy remote that you know is going to absorb everything? Because there's always one piece of something that's going to be on separate for me. So there's definitely a, a one remote solution. But the the thing I'm holding up for WeBeam yeah. TV, the 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 smartphone. Your, yeah. your smartphone will double as the remote. Now, if you want to change the channel, opening your phone, opening the app, changing that, that you don't want to do that either. Mm -hmm. So you want a remote control, but you want something that's a little bit more than a remote control and something that can work together. You know, a lot of times when we're going into somebody's home or their office, you know, they've already been frustrated by having a half a dozen remotes on the coffee table. And only one person, again, knows how to work all of them. So kind of compiling all those into a single remote or hey, even a single remote that will also work with your phone. So you, you can pick which one you like better or your tablet or, you know, even be able to do it from your, from your computer. But it looks the same. It feels the same each place you're using it. If I roll up into Maximum Audio Video and I bought my flat screen, um, I don't know, 
10 years ago, maybe. Right. Maybe more. Mm -hmm. I paid a lot of money for it. Sure, we and all did. Now, now they don't cost as much, but they, they're they not built the same because I still have the same right. television. These days, it seems like you can get a fabulous television for $2,000, but in two years, you just got to throw it away. What 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 If I walk in the maximum, what is that one, like that, that Porsche of televisions right now? Which is the highest level? So, I mean, that's one thing that we do better than anybody else in Tampa Bay is education on why you would buy something over an, another product. Uh, Sony, of, of all companies, have had their ups and downs over the past 15 years, but right now they make the best looking TV on the market and here's why. Sony doesn't just make televisions, they don't just make smartphones, they make movies, they make movie cameras, they edit movies, and then they make the TV that you watch it on. So when that start to finish process, they have education about how to make things look good on the TV. Mm -hmm. So their 4K TVs, which is the, the new standard, look the best in the business. They have the best processing. So that's when you're looking at something, look, at the end of the day, a flat panel TV, they all kind of look the same. It's what's inside that counts. And, uh, you know, that's why that's the hot product on the on the market. What's 4K, 5G? What's the difference? What's 4K? What is that? That's a great question. I I've never heard the K the before. Time. Why? You know, what? what is yeah. that? So we had HD, I don't know, 10 years ago. Everybody had to switch over to HD because regular analog was mm. going away. You had to move over to HD. This is the next evolution of HD. And to put it in a nutshell, it's double the resolution. So it's double the amount of pixels on the screen than HD. And that is the standard. That's the way we're heading in five years from now, there you won't be able to buy an HDTV. It's already headed that way. You can't hardly even find an HDTV. They are all 4K, and it's just another acronym, meaning it's doubling over that resolution, just like Moore's Law. It keeps doubling and doubling. HD is ob obsolete, it's, pretty much. It's getting there. Yeah, it'll be there pretty soon. Well, TV is pretty much HD, all of it, correct? All it's of it's pretty much HD, and, and the cable providers, and boy, I hope that they're not sponsored. Hey, let's hope they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cable providers well, are going I, away. Uh, yeah. People want to stream. They want their you know, streaming services. They want to be able to get whatever they want to watch whenever they want to watch it, and they want it the best quality. You know, and that's kind of where all this is headed, that the TVs, to keep up with demand, it has to be more agile. So you're going to have a streaming thing to go with a, a good quality TV. No doubt. I mean, electronics is, a, you know, you hate to be a sexist, but it's a manly thing. You know, the guys come in Not necessarily. pound their chest. A lot of women pound their chest, so, too. Not as much pound or chest, but oh. I'll tell you the thing that they do want. They want their house to look good. Yeah. And they don't want your cable box and your receiver and all your stuff underneath the TV in a cabinet. They don't want any of that. They want that gone in the closet. They want window treatments. And they don't want to have to go open mm. them and close them. They want all that to work together. So, so why they don't care about that it operates from the smartphone, they do want their house to look good. They want it to be comfortable. They want their kitchen lights to be set just a certain way. Well, I mean, you may not really care. They care. Uh, th th for them, it's about, you know, being sexy, I think. You're right. For, I think for a as guy... As it should be. As a guy, I think it's more about being efficient. Yep. A guy, I just want things to be efficient. You want it to work. Yeah. I don't want to be bothered by it. Mm -hmm. I want it to work, and that's it. And that, I, don't, I don't need anything else. I think a woman likes to say, well, I have 4K, and all kind of stuff, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, and they want... They want different things. They'll enjoy the TV and they'll enjoy the speakers, but they want their outside patio yeah. to have nice ambiance to it. Mm. They, you know, like I said, with the shades, they want their window shades to be able to match a certain way and be able to operate together. They want their house to be put together. We offer that too. So it's as much as it's always been a place where the wife says, I don't want to go to that store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we've worked really hard on, on offering products to both the husband and the wife or the wife and wife or husband and husband that enjoy living at home, entertaining at home, and having an easy, seamless experience when they're in their house. You guys have done such a good job, and not just you specifically, but electronics in general, but I, that I really believe that you're messing up football. I'm right? Gonna, I'm going to say this. Having played my whole life, I never sat and watched football. But when I did sit and watch football, I watched it on television. So to me, it's the most telegenic thing in the world. Like watching NFL football, to me, it's like the number one thing. But you've made, it to, you've made it to a point where you could either buy these tickets to the season tickets or you could have this, you know, beautiful piece of machinery in your in your house and bring everybody over and, you know, spend money on food. It just almost makes more sense now to spend that money on the television. Agreed. Well, I'll tell you what. And that and 
pl- players are doing some messing up for people not to be, be coming back. Let's take a quick break and come back. This is Warwick Dunn, and you're listening to the Real Estate Quarterback Show, hosted by my man, Brandon Rhymes. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372, online at ConsumerQB.com. to the consumer quarterback brandon rhymes online at consumerqb.com brandon is tampa bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice call brandon today at 813-670-7372 all right welcome back consumer quarterback show ian beckles filling in for brandon rhymes intelligent talk radio and we brought intelligent people in here richard fica also zach davis now uh it's becoming this is time of the year and first of all uh does this time of the year affect insurance at all not with what i do business mm-hmm. owners you know whenever they open their business is when they're buying the policy so uh, for car insurance you see a little bit of a spike this time of year mama gets a car for christmas sure Tax returns. Mama gets a car after the tax return, mm-hmm. but for the most part, we're we're relatively uh, status. You see more homeowners right at the beginning of summer too, because people are moving during the summer. No doubt. Now, I don't have to ask you. Uh, this time of the year, obviously, uh, audio, video, it's got to be a spike in, in your sales. Tech is. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. The, this is the holiday for tech. Starting Black Friday, we mm-hmm. do a big Black Friday sale all the way through. After tax time, just like Richard's saying, we run all the way through. This is our. This is the time of year. Now, do you give? I'm not the type of guy to go run for a discount on Black Friday. I'm not right. that guy. I rather relax. Certainly, it does, I'm not going to camp anywhere to get a discount. Uh, what kind of discounts would you give in Black Friday? Is it, is it is it worth it? We won't. We have a different philosophy. We're not going to sell junk just so it has a low price on it. Mm-hmm. We're going to still sell quality merchandise at, at a good price that we're that we can sell and that we can still stand behind. Because look, after Black Friday. We'll still be there on Dale Mabry, and we still want to answer the phone if something goes wrong and don't want to tell you, I'm sorry, you bought a a, a cheap piece of equipment. Yeah, you no know? doubt. Now, I'm l- looking here, the best retailers and their best discounts, and I didn't know we'd get this high. Macy's, 63%. Stage, which I've never heard of Stage mm-hmm. before, 62. J.C. Penney, 62. Uh, Gordman, 61. Kohl's, 58. Uh, Sears, 43%. That's that's an average discount. You got to look at day? the original price that they're discounting because that yeah. that price they're talking about that they're discounting from nobody's paying that price. Yeah, that's like saying, "Hey, come here. We have uh, a car. We have cars here from nine ninety nine. There's one. They're all afraid of him. <laughs> right? <laughs> that right? Right? I mean, that's you know that's the case. Yeah, and that's why I just never figure out why people go out of the way to save five dollars on something that's going to be stocked the next day. 
Well, we have a different approach. We, we embrace Amazon to an extent. Uh, there is a lot of products that you can get on Amazon that um, are not for our retail space. The product that's for our retail space is a little more complex. Maybe you can't find the answer on the Internet or there's conflicting information. What do I need? You know, we're here for that. How does Amazon affected your 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 sales? Has it affected you at all? Sure, of course, it's affected every retailer. Mm -hmm. um, we are a little bit diversified. We do automotive, we do home, we do commercial. So we're able to, you know, kind of go with the uh, ups and downs of business. Um, but yeah, we ha have to be more specialized. We have to train our guys. We have to stay on top of the technology. So we have those answers when somebody maybe already was on Amazon and said, "What am I looking at?" Mm -hmm. Now, Florida Coastal uh, Insurance. Is that, a, is that a big insurance company or a small insurance uh, company? We're, at, we're about a $7 million agency over in Clearwater. Uh, we're totally referral-based, so we're mm -hmm. we're small in my world, but we're not the smallest by any stretch. Sure. I've got nine team members that are part of what we do. Okay, that's a good bunch of, bunch of people. How long have you been around? Uh, 21 years I've been doing it. Ever since I got out of the military, I've good been doing you. insurance. So Grinding. I, that's what you know. Just never got out, and, yeah. I, and I, I found that I was decent at it, and... So I enjoy it. So you you were into insurance before you, you enlisted? When I no 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 when I when I got out of the military, mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually was headed to special forces, and came home and both my parents were very ill. Came home actually kind of on a come home for a couple of weeks to see everybody before I went away for a long time. And both my parents were very very ill. And a friend of mine's mom said, "Why are you upset? This is your part. Two hundred people at a party for me." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Because my parents are sick. Nobody told me." She said, "You're off doing whatever you do. Why are we going to tell you?" So I'll give you a job tomorrow. So I literally on a dime really? changed directions. Yeah, got out, decided to take care of my parents, wow. and uh, I, I don't regret it for a, for a second. No so. doubt. Once you once you grasp onto something that you that you're passionate about, uh, and there, there's a number they say it's ten thousand hours you got to put in before yeah. you're an expert, and. Uh, you know, there's not that many experts out there, but 20 years or something will get you close. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, again, everybody thinks they set apart, but I, I've been an, actually an insurance educator for 17 of those 21, um, and I, I do consulting for other insurance agents, so when they don't know how to handle a client, I help them with that. So our clients kind of get that, you know, I charge people 125 an hour to consult. Mm -hmm. My clients are getting that just as part of being my client. So we're pretty proud of that, offering that to the clients. And frankly, the, the young ladies who work with me are smarter than I am. So when you're dealing with them, you're getting the better end of the stick anyway. No doubt. And Zach, you, you do you go back to the days of having subwoofers in the back and you were really good with electronics? Because I had the subwoofers, but I didn't get into electronics. That, that's how I got in this business, yeah, crawling man. in the trunk of a car <laughs> yeah. in high school. That's but hanging you, out at the stereo shop. I, was, I had the, the, the 15s in the back Bunch or whatever. 15s. But, right. but I had the same ones, uh, the, uh, the, the tubes. Absolutely. Uh, um, but, but you were the one back there actually... Wiring them up and yeah, in high school I, I started hanging out at the stereo shop after school and finally I said here's a broom You want a job mm -hmm. and uh, it started from there and I, I just got into it It's been my passion ever since and um, you know a, a, a lot of younger people aren't taking that path that I did but uh, you know It's it's been fruitful and I enjoy it. You know well, I'm gonna say this. I mean, I'm, I'm 50 years old I'm pretty darn old, but young people aren't taking any paths uh, you know that a lot of them aren't taking any paths at all. They're, I wish I could get a younger guy to come in looking for a job that that was interested in what we did because I'd hire him in a half second. Well, I I've, I've been looking forever for the right person. I know a lot of people around me that look for the right person. Right. And I, I've I've always said I don't care what you do, um, you know what your craft is. Uh, if you find me a dog, we'll 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 figure out the rest. Put your nose down and and, and yeah. get to work. You know, just That's it. somebody was just going to grind it out regardless. Somebody's not going to bitch and moan about stuff, you know? Right. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, in 2017, everybody's very sensitive. Everybody's very sensitive that you don't hurt people's feelings. Right. But I'm a tough person to say, hey, I was sick yesterday. I would say, okay. But, unfortunately, you know, I had a radio show for 15 years and didn't miss a day because I was sick. And I played in the league for nine years. I went to 11 training camps and didn't miss a day because I was sick. And that's not because I wasn't sick. Does that make any you sense? You play through it. You, Absolutely. You got to. I mean, it's, it's it's. You got to. It's real easy to to just not. It's easy to not. Right. I, I think I think they don't understand the benefit of just that day to day grind as you're talking about. They mm -hmm. don't understand it. We actually, I own a gym too for for strength athletes, and 
We I say all the time, Google has never squatted 700 pounds. Because <laughs> right. it doesn't matter how many videos you watch. Yeah, it doesn't matter true. how many YouTube sessions you you take in. Mm -hmm. You got to get under that bar and Period. just keep going. Well, it's, that's like everything in the world. Like this right here, okay? Radio. I've been doing radio for 15 years, okay? It's pretty natural to me now. It wasn't natural to me 15 years ago. Took work. Yeah, you have to, you have to put it in though. You have to make mistakes. You got to sound bad. You got you know it, that's that's the way it goes. Football. Uh, you know the guys that come out of college that believe that they are something, they don't make it. We you see got, that every year. You got to come out and you got to be still be a dog. You got to have the ability, obviously, but you can see the ones that come through. I got it. I know it. it doesn't work. The ones that come in, listen. Write down if you if you run into somebody who's been in the business for forty years and they have more knowledge than you, boy, listen, soak it listen, in, listen, soak it in. And and I've been that. I tried to be that person. I remember even when I played. Uh, if you know the name uh, Anthony Munoz, was, uh, yeah, right. probably the best Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, one of the best tackles of all time. He he ended his career here. And when Anthony got here, he, he got hurt. He didn't end up playing, but he was he was gonna play beside me, which was gonna be a dream come true. But everything that he said. I absorbed everything that I said. He said, and the kids today, I think they come out of school knowing, that with, but without the fight. Right. There, there's no fight. And that's, and I, I talk to kids all the time. I, I mean, in, I have a teach-in next week where I'm going to talk to two different groups of, of, of kids. I, I talk to kids from um, International Academy of Design and Technology. So I, t I talk to third grade kids. Don't be scared to and, put the work in. This, and don't, don't be, be scared. scared to fail. Right. And, and and don't be scared. And this is this is my word that I should try to patent it. And you probably can't own it. But these days, nobody wants to be uncomfortable. They want to be right. yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Once they get uncomfortable, they'll back up. But I just, you know, yeah, you know you spent your whole life uncomfortable. Absolutely. And when you're lifting weights, when you're gaining is when you're uncomfortable. Absolutely. But he could always, when you're pushing that, that other rep, it's easy to rack it. But to get a couple more reps, that's what's going to make you great. That's the difference. Yeah, well, we don't want to sound like some old fuddy-duddies here uh, <laughs> preaching to the young people because you know what? The young people ain't listening anyways. Yeah. They're still sleeping. It's the difference between knowledge and the application of knowledge, though. Mm -hmm. You're right. They, they'll, they'll tell you about a combustion engine, and, and, and uh, but they've never turned a wrench. Correct. Correct. And there's a huge difference and a disconnect in that with the younger generation, I think. No doubt. Okay, but this has been fun, guys. I've learned a lot about insurance, um, uh, about audio video, and I've, I've known a little bit before, but you know, it's good to uh, you know enlighten people out there, and that's what Brandon does. He brings some intelligent people here, and uh, they bring the knowledge. Like I said, I know a little bit about football, a little bit about radio, a few other things, but um, you know, you're good to bring some knowledgeable people out here. Uh, Richard Fica, thank you, brother. Ian, it's very nice to, to be with you today. Keep pumping, bro. Thank you very keep much. Keep pumping. <laughs> and, uh, Zach Davis, keep pumping. Ian, thanks, buddy. All right? All right. Go over there to Maximum Audio Video uh, and uh, Florida Coastal Insurance. They will take wonderful care of you. Thank you, Brandon Ryan, for letting me sit in. If you guys want to check me out on social media, it's at Ian Beckles. Everybody have a wonderful week, and please be safe. Peace You've out. been listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Whether it's real estate, consumer, or financial advice, let Brandon call your next play. Contact Brandon Rhymes at 813-670-7372. That's 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. And join us next time for the Consumer Quarterback Show, weekday afternoons at 5 on AM 1380, The Biz.